Hey, this is Tony Polizzi, and I'm going to show you guys some basic portrait photography editing. Um, first thing, I got my image here. And my objective here, I think I'm just going to clean it up a bit. Just the colors on it. Do a little cropping. And I think I'm going to go for like a sepia type tone of it. So, you don't have to do sepia, I'm just going to do this just for a little additional thing you guys can learn after the uh, editing but um first thing we're going to do is crop our image and um you're going to want to do this before any editing because you don't want to edit your image to anything that you see what you aren't going to see after you crop it if that makes sense because then you'll alter what will be on the image without you wanting it in the end and then after you're done cropping it, we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast. And the reason why I'm going to edit the contrast and brightness before removing any blemishes is because this is going to make our blemishes stand out a little more and easier to spot and easier for the program to, to fix those blemishes. One thing you're going to want to make sure is don't add too much contrast or brightness because you don't want to completely blow out either your white or dark colors at all. You want to maintain what uh, value you have. Something around this should be a little more brightness. Something around that should be fine. Then we're going to go ahead and use our spot healing brush here and if you don't see it for any reason try left clicking down and um, make sure it's on spot healing brush it might be one of these tools first but it shouldn't be um, to resize it you can use the bracket keys right bracket makes it bigger left bracket makes it smaller and I'm just using control plus and minus to zoom in and out I'm not going to get too detailed in removing the blemishes right now because I want to keep this video nice and short, get over as much information as we can together. So just give me a minute here and I'll quickly remove some of the blemishes. Not all of them for time's sake. This is something that you, if you want to produce a really nice image, you're going to want to spend a lot of time doing this, making sure and perfecting um, what's on their skin, and making sure it's nice and really just perfect, I guess. It's a hard word to use, but... And you don't have to just just only do spots with the spot healing brush. Like you can um, click down and drag it a little bit so you can get more elongated areas nice and cleared out and it actually works fairly well. Um, it's about good for now I don't want to spend too much time on that and then after you're done removing the blemishes Go to your image, adjustments, and go to levels. And you'll have this little, I guess, bar graph here. Uh, not really a bar graph, but just a graph. And then um, here you have your shadows and your highlights. When you move the slider to the right, it makes your shadows darker. And with your highlights, when you move them to the left, it'll make your highlights uh, lighter. Just be careful using this because you don't want to, again, blow out your colors completely. But um, after you make this hole in, in this middle, um, when you move it to the right, it'll make the uh, entire values um, get either darker when you move it to the right and lighter when you move it to the left. So I'm going to make this a bit lighter. Not too much though. That looks nice. I think that looks nice. Hit OK. Go back to Image, Adjustments. I'm going to go Vibrance. Um, what Vibrance does is it pops out the colors that 
um, don't have much saturation already. So just go ahead and give that some vibrance if you need to. Saturation affects all the colors in the image, so um, you're going to want to be careful using this, especially if it's a portrait, because you're going to make the skin tone really either red or yellow and it doesn't look natural. Just be careful using that if you're going to. Is it okay? I'm, like I said, I'm going to do a sepia type uh, image here, so I'm going to go to my black and white effect here. And with the nice thing about this is you can meet each uh, color. You can determine if you want it, each color dark or light. And I want to make the background a little bit darker to make the foreground pop, so I'm just going to move the greens over to the left some. Move the yellow to the right so it has some definition back there. And, um... Make the reds a little darker because that appears on the skin, so on, as a shadow on the skin. So I'm going to make sure that's a little darker. The shirt is blue, so I'm going to make that also a bit darker because it seems just too bright. Not enough definition. A little cyan as well. And we are going to add a little tint. Now you can use any color, um, any color you want to really. You can even go blue for some odd reason if you really want a blue image. Um, but, let's go sepia. It's a little too saturated, so I'm going to drop this down a bit. That looks pretty nice. And for a final thing for me, um, you'll see as some parts of the skin seem a little too white. So I'm going to go ahead and take the burn tool, which uh, darkens uh, the image as a brush. But if you do it too much, it's gonna really like actually like burn your image. It looks like because you'll see it. This seems really weird. Like it almost turns into ash. So you're just going to want to be really careful using this as well. I'm going to drop that down to about 20%. And just drag it over those really light areas that could just be a bit darker. And that's about it for now. I mean... Your image looks a bit cleaned up and your colors are more defined and overall looks like a much better picture than, I, than before. So uh, go ahead and like this or comment if you want to uh, have any questions, hopefully I can help you. And uh, thanks for watching.